Okay, so we're looking here at a typical cervical vertebra, bloody typical, where we've got a uh, small rectangular body and the other kind of uh, quickly uh, noticeable feature of course is the bifid spinous process. So those are two things hopefully you immediately notice. Then the, uh, the next thing of course is this transverse foramen. So hopefully you can immediately tell that's going to be cervical. Uh, you can also see there's a fairly triangular uh, vertebral foramen there too. Now, so we've got some other fairly um, usual features though that you'd have in any vertebra. So body, vertebral foramen, spinous process. The, the arch is everything except the body. And uh, of course we have a transverse process on nearly all the vertebrae. On this one though, we've got an anterior and posterior tubercle. Okay, so there's an anterior and posterior tubercle on the transverse process. There's also a sulcus for the spinal nerve. And that's just here. So there's a groove there. And if I just turn it up so you can see it from a lateral point of view, you can see that there's a sulcus or groove there that the spinal nerve is going to run through. So that's the sulcus for the spinal nerve there. Uh, then we've got superior and inferior articular processes. Now we're looking at a facet on the superior articular process here. So if we turn this just so we can see, oh yeah, it's not really amazingly clear, is it? But, oh, there we go. This bump here, this whole bump, is the superior articular process. So the whole lump is the process. The smooth articular bit on it is the facet. So that's the facet, but the whole bump is the process. Now, then we've got an inferior articular process. Again, oh, yeah, there we go. Again, here, here's the bump here that's the process. So if it was pinned back here, you'd say inferior articular process. If it was pinned here, you'd say inferior articular facet, the smooth bit there that's going to articulate with the facet on the vertebra inferior to it. So just make sure you can spot the facet on it in each case, and then the process, which is that whole bump in each case. Then coming around from the, those superior and inferior articular processes and facets, we have the lamina, and it's nice and flat. So if we look here, you can see the lamina pretty clearly from a superior point of view. You can see the superior articular facet there on the process. You can see the lamina quite thin. And then spinous process, nice bifid spinous process there at the back. Now, oh, and then, possibly lastly, but who knows what else I've missed out. Here, if we look at an anterior point of view, you can see the body fairly thin, not, not terribly tall there in height, but either side on the superior aspect, we have a bit that sticks up, and those bits are the uncinate processes. So uncinate processes, feature of a typical cervical vertebra. So that's typical. Was there anything I missed? Was there any feature there on the list that didn't get a look in? No? Okay, brilliant. What we'll do is just have a quick look then at a few of the atypical cervical vertebrae. So, starting with C1. So here we've got uh, C1 seen from a, a superior point of view here where and uh, anterior is up this side. So we've got an anterior arch just here. So this whole thing is the anterior arch and there's a tubercle on the front. So that's the anterior tubercle on the anterior arch. So this is the posterior arch. So this vertebrae has two arches and there's a tubercle, a posterior tubercle. Gee, it's not as noticeable as the anterior one. So there's a posterior tubercle there at the posterior extent or the middle of the posterior arch. Now again, like with um, any of the vertebrae, we have superior articular facets here for the occipital bone and then we have inferior articular facets here for uh, C2. So we can see both of those. But in between, what we have is a lateral mass so that whole bit of bone there that's in between the, the facets is the lateral mass. Now you can see it from a superior point of view here. But of course if I pinned it here I would want you to say superior articular facet. So if I want you to say lateral mass I've pretty much got it pinned on the front here. Okay? So that's where the lateral mass would be. Now of course we have a, a transverse process. We're the transverse foramen. And 
the, remember the vertebral artery is coming up through this transverse foramen and then what it does on C1 is it wraps around behind the lateral mass in this groove here. So that's the groove for the vertebral artery in there. Just inferior to, or to this bump here that's on the, on the lateral mass there. So probably if I turn it around that way too, you can see that, oh no, wow, that's cool. You can see that groove really clearly there. So it's coming from the, the artery comes up through the transverse foramen and then goes around there, okay, posteriorly. And then the two vertebral arteries are then going to unite to form the basilar artery. All right. Um, so we've got... Oh, yeah. Now, on the anterior arch, on the posterior surface of it, just here, there's a facet or fovea for the dens. You can use either term for that, facet or fovea. So it's on the posterior surface of the anterior arch. And of course the dens is this bit here that, that uh, protrudes superiorly on C2. And if we put C1 and C2 together like that, you can see how that facet or fovea is going to articulate with the front of the dens there. Okay, now was there anything on C1 that I missed? No? Okay, brilliant, good. Okay, so far so good. So here we've got C2 then. So C2, um, oh and of course with C1 there's no body. So there's two arches but no body. With C2 there is a body. So if we look at C2 from an anterior point of view, here's the body. And of course the dens protrude superiorly from the body. And the dens, or sometimes called odontoid process, is embryologically the tissue that would be the body of C1. So we just whack C1 back there on top again for a sec. You can see that that's where the body of C1 really should be. So that tissue that makes up the dens should have been the body of C1. But of course this arrangement works much better. It allows us to turn our head from uh, left to right. Okay, so we've got a superior articular facet here. And then of course an inferior articular facet. And these ones look more like, tip, uh, like a typical survival one. They're, they're not quite, but they're pretty close. So body, inferior articular facet there on the inferior articular process, which is that bump there. Then coming around from there, oh, firstly, sorry, transverse process out here with a transverse foramen, lamina here, and then a spinous process. Now this one, it looks like it wants to be bifid, but it's... It, it's only just getting the, the two bits there. So C2, like C1, hopefully, visible um, or discernible at a glance, hopefully you can tell that it's not typical when you're looking at either of those, C1 or C2, just at a glance, especially if you turn C2 that way and you can, you can see the dens really clearly there. Okay, so a couple of atypical survival vertebrae there. Now, if we have a look at the last of the atypical cervical vertebrae here we've got C7 and hopefully you kind of immediately notice well you can tell it's cervical it's got this transverse foramen here on the transverse process um, it doesn't have usually a bifid spinous process though and look at the length of the spinous process there compared to a typical cervical vertebra much longer so C7 a much longer spinous process and non-bifid it does, however, have all the other us usual features, so body, lamina, superior, uh, articular, facet, and process, and, and so on. So it does have everything else that you'd expect. Uh, not always going to have really clear anterior, posterior tubicles there, though, on the transverse process. Okay, so that's C7. It, this spinous process here is starting to look a little bit thoracic. All right? 